Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagan Maradian here in Washington at the House of Sweden, Sweden's Embassy to the United States. And it's our, our honor to talk to Joran uh, Mortensen, who is uh, the director of Sweden's uh, Defense Material Administration, the legendary FMV. Uh, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. And we have had very good days here in uh, Washington. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because it was the 17th U.S. Uh, Sweden uh, Defense uh, Industry Cooperation uh, Conference uh, that was here uh, at the embassy uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, a lot of uh, conversation and also some very positive statements by Al Schaefer, the deputy, yep. uh, uh, the, the deputy secretary for acquisition and sustainment, Ellen Lord's deputy, who was talking about Sweden in the context of it being part of the American defense industrial base. And the United States is working to expand that foundation and partner with uh, as many innovative nations as possible, and Sweden is among the most innovative defense uh, and aerospace powers out there, whether it's developing uh, an airplane of the sophistication of Gripen, the A-26 submarine. I want to ask you about both of those uh, programs, but also the U.S.-Swedish uh, partnership between Boeing and Saab, for example, on the TX trainer that's going to come, come to the market. Talk to us a little bit. There is a strategic uh, understanding among the United States, Sweden, uh, and Norway uh, at this point looking at a cooperative uh, uh, agreement. Uh, Finland is also part of that as well. Talk to us a little bit about the specific cooperation agreement between the United States and Sweden because on the one hand, being part of the American defense industrial base is a good thing, but it also comes with some challenges. Talk to us about where we are on that uh, agreement. Uh, first of all, I w would like to say it was my first participation in this conference and it gives uh, a lot uh, because uh, there are a lot of high representatives from both countries uh, when it comes to the government but also from uh, the industry uh, and uh, that makes it very fruitful uh, for us. Uh, from the Swedish side, uh, we have uh, or we are seeing uh, the US as a key partner uh, because uh, their uh, technology and uh, also defense material systems are uh, key for our operational capabilities in the armed forces. And if we are looking back in the history, we have a lot of good examples which put uh, a lot of uh, capability into the armed forces. Uh, we have, uh, as you mentioned before, the grip and system and nearly 50% of the components and subsystems in the grip and comes from the, uh, the US industry. But we did also uh, procure the Black Hawk helicopter and we had a very good uh, support from the US Army when we implemented that in the armed forces. We have the guided uh, projectile for artillery Excalibur which uh, was a very successful uh, cooperation between uh, Raytheon and, and Bofors, uh, BOE Bofors in, in Sweden. And uh, the, last, uh, the, the latest uh, big program uh, w uh, was when we ordered the Patriot system, which will be a cornerstone in, together with Gripen in the Swedish air defense for a very long time. And I do also see Patriot as a cornerstone and a catalyst for, for more developed cooperation between uh, Sweden and, and the U.S. Um, I, and I misspoke a little bit earlier in the program. The, th the agreement was between the United States or among the United States, Sweden, and Finland. Uh, and I'd added Norway to that. Norway obviously is a NATO yeah, member and, yeah, and gets yeah. covered on a yeah. under a different agreement. And what's the next step to get the mechanical pieces of cooperation? Or are there all the agreements in place right now that allow both sides to benefit from each other's capability, technology, and markets? Yeah, we have the regulations today which we can manage. So I don't think we need more at the moment uh, because we have working uh, uh, procedures between the countries. Um, as you look at cooperation with the United States, you talked about some systems that Sweden is going to be uh, buying from the United States. What are some systems that are being developed by Sweden, do you think, that will be most attractive for the Pentagon as well as whether um, other national security agencies as well, given Swedish expertise, for example, in telecommunications. You're the only nation in Europe, I think, now that's developing a lightweight torpedo, uh, whereas the United States is looking for a new lightweight torpedo. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, Joran, talk, talk to us about sort of the areas where you think Sweden can satisfy some important U.S. Mm -hmm. requirements. Uh, as Sweden has a strong uh, uh, defense industry 
base uh, developed for many years and uh, Sweden is also in the edge in, in many technologies. So uh, there are examples uh, which we can uh, support the US, but we have to remember that um, uh, companies, defense companies in Sweden is not owned by the government. So they are making business uh, by their own. And uh, for example, the TX, uh, the cooperation between Boeing and Saab, is a good example of successful work. Uh, uh, but we have also other examples. Uh, I know that they are looking at artillery system in Sweden, uh, artillery ammunition, uh, combat vehicles, sensors, command and control systems. So there are a broad uh, area of, of uh, possibilities. And do you think the torpedo is one of them that could be particularly attractive to the to the U.S. side? Yeah, we we ordered a new torpedo f to our new submarines, A-26, but also to the to the corvettes. And uh, after us, also uh, uh, Finland uh, made the decision to to go for the Swedish new light torpedo, and uh, that could be a, a good possibility for the U.S. also if they are interesting. Um, let me ask you about the two uh, uh, big acquisition programs, homegrown development programs, which is the A-26 submarine yeah. and the Gripen, uh, the E-model or the Super Gripen uh, that, that can be regarded as. Um, both of the programs were developed very, very rapidly um, and was were developed with a lot of technology um, and also try to do it to go up the learning curve as quickly as possible so that you don't have lengthy learning curves where the learning curve on the submarine is going to be I think two or three submarines and the learning curve on the Gripen is going to be something like 30 jets which is unheard of generally it's 150 to 180 for jets and at least five submarines before you get up the learning curve give us an update on both of these programs let's start with the Gripen um, where is it in its development are you satisfied with where it is um, and if not you know what are the what does uh, the industry team have to do better yeah when it comes to the Group and Echo, we, de we ordered that from Saab in 2013 and uh, we have now got uh, two test aircrafts and we will have our third before summer and uh, it's working well and it's progressing in the right way. We will have the first delivery of Group and Echo for operational use in 21 and uh, we will end up in 2026. And we have a good progress in, in, in that program. And also, uh, the Brazil Air Force decided to go for uh, uh, Grip and Echo. So they have also uh, ordered uh, next uh, fighter from, from, uh, from uh, Saab. But there is also an interesting uh, uh, method we are using <coughs> for the Grip and Aircraft, and that is an incremental uh, development, which means that we can, in the platform, which we are using over many years, we can all over the life cycle time put in new capabilities. And that has been a very successful because that makes uh, the aircraft relevant in its operational use. And especially now when we can see different technology areas uh, running very fast in, in the development. We need to have the opportunity to put in new capabilities over the time. And that is a successful method which I would like to see also in other uh, types of defense material. Um, you know, let me let me ask you about that yeah. because I think it's actually uh, uh, Saab is not one of our sponsors so I'm not doing this to sort of to sell the Saab case, but it was a fascinating model where the system is like an iPad and all of the systems on it are applications and you have 20 upgrades that the customer will be able to get over the course of the program in order to keep it updated and, and, and fresh. Talk to us about how that model and approach can apply to different programs because one of the things that you get as a Gripen buyer is you get the application tool set to craft your own unique applications to put systems on and off of the, the aircraft in, an, in a very open architecture. Talk to us about how that model can be applied to different weapon systems. Yeah, if you're looking at the weapon systems today, they are more uh, complex and uh, many of them using software. So that means when it comes to software, you must have a, another way of thinking. And uh, the incremental uh, method I talked about before, 
I think that is a way forward when you look into that. Um, and what are the other systems where you could see that being applied to? Um, I know the submarine is under development, yeah, yeah. but where, where would you like to put this technology in other sort of complex systems? Do you see a role for it in air defense networks, yeah. or wh where, where would you apply the technology? Yeah, air defense systems, combat vehicles, tanks, uh, artillery. Uh, so it is a broad spectrum of, of possibilities. Yeah. Command right. and control system. Right. Yeah. Um, and talk to us about the A-26 submarine and where you are on its development. It looked like it was having a few challenges, is what Swedish friends of mine told me, but you know much better than I do uh, the status of the program. Where are you? Are you satisfied with where you are? And is it going to be fielded uh, on time and on schedule and on budget, more importantly? Yeah. Uh, first of all, we ordered uh, the A-26 submarines in 2015, so they are halfway in in the development and, and, and started the cons construction and uh, they will be delivered uh, uh, to FMV 23 and 24 and we will use them for, for test and evaluation for uh, uh, yeah about one year and then we will deliver to the armed forces 24 and 25 and we have to, to, to know that all this kind of uh, complex technology when you are in the develop uh, phase uh, uh, for, for, for the material there are always challenges so so but we are managing after, after when they are coming we, we're trying to to, to solve it uh, during the way um, talk to us about the rebuilding of skill within FMV with, uh, within the material and administration and sort of improving Sweden's ability to satisfy some of its own defense needs. It was concerns that uh, Germany was underinvesting uh, in the Cockham's HDW partnership that drove the government to try and buy back that capability invested in Saab. Once upon a time, FMV was one of the world's most formidable defense engineering organizations mm -hmm. that did everything from uh, advanced technology development to acquisition to even full life cycle maintenance, uh, which was a model for many countries. But after the Cold War, that model sort of dissolved. Now there's a, a, a lot of impetus to improve that capability. Where do you think you are in that capability improvement plan to rebuild some of these engineering capabilities that the organization lost? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, when it comes to, to uh, uh, the submarines, uh, as you probably know, uh, uh, both fighter systems and underwater system uh, are pointed out uh, as uh, essential national security interest. That means that we we will have capability in the country and also to have control over the knowledge and uh, information about the systems. Uh, so, so that is uh, very much. Uh, uh, a driver also when it comes to submarines. But if you look in the history, Sweden has a long tradition of building uh, submarines. Uh, so we have a capable industry for it. Uh, then when uh, we are developing the organization, uh, we have a very good model and cost-effective model in Sweden and that is uh, different parts uh, into this. It is uh, the armed forces, it is the FMB as a procurement organization, it is uh, the FY, the research and technology, and also the industry. So we are trying to encourage each other, but we are very clear when it comes to, to uh, separate who has uh, who has which responsibility because uh, we have different interests in, in this way, in, in some way, uh, but um, we, we still use the resources very effective and, and especially when it comes to engineers, uh, experts, uh, we must use them in an optimal way. So uh, that is very much what we are building our capability on. And let me ask you one last question. The Defense Commission uh, reported uh, its findings, and, and the Defense Commission always shapes what uh, defense, uh, the strategic defense investment that Sweden makes. Talk to us about 
the findings from the commission that affect you as the head of FMV, who is the organization that has to deliver the capability that the commission called for, yeah, yeah. including, so, and it's great that, for example, 60 more Gripens will remain in service, but now you're the guy who has to support those extra yeah. airplanes. Yeah. Uh, if that will be reality, the proposal is the proposals in, in, in the report, it means uh, another FMB in the future. We have to grow, and uh, that is a substantial increased production we need to develop. More effective processes from to, to, to go from orders to deliver uh, operational systems. So, so. Uh, yeah, it, it is new challenges for, for uh, the agencies in Sweden because we have, for, for a very long time, we have decreased uh, the defense spending and now this is a quite uh, uh, ambitious uh, level of economy that we have to increase uh, the capability and the acquisition uh, acquis acquisitions. Uh. And, and, and one last question because you're running to the airport yeah. in order to get back to Sweden. Um, FMV used to do the full service logistics as well as the de uh, systems development and uh, acquisition. Mm -hmm. That got broken up, but yep. part of it moved back into yep. you. Talk to us about where you are and how you work with the new logistics agency and, and how you two are splitting work up and how you handle, for example, a larger fighter fleet in the future as efficiently as possible. We are now uh, back in what the FMV was be before 2013. Uh, uh, we are now a procurement agency, but we are also responsible for uh, test and evaluation and uh, export related issues. So uh, it, the, the, uh, uh, the responsibility for uh, FMV is today very focused on those three areas. Yeah. Joran Mortensen, uh, who is the National Armaments Director of uh, Sweden, but also the Director of the FMV, the Swedish Defense Material uh, Organization. Sir, thanks very much. It's a pleasure and hopefully see you in Stockholm. Thank you very much and the pleasure is mine. And thank you for good days in Washington. Thank you.